Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking our first look at Fusion 360 and what better way to do that than a design project. Let's utilize the in-context, parametric and solid modeling tools available in Fusion 360 to design an enclosure for this, a headphone amplifier, but any small electronics will do. All that technical jargon might seem quite complicated, but don't worry, in this video series we're going to go through it step by step. We'll start simple with the reference geometry using basic modeling features, and then as we go through creating the top, bottom and volume dial, we'll gradually use more and more advanced techniques to help you learn along the way. And then once we've created all the geometry we need, we'll export STLs, 3D print and assemble it. At which point, if you want to make any design changes, you can iterate. So go back to the design process, make some changes, export, print and reassemble. If you want to undertake this exact project yourself, then you're more than welcome to, and a link to the electronics will be in the description below. And of course, you'll need a soldering iron in order to assemble it. But for now, let's jump straight into CAD and get on with our reference geometry. So to get started, we're going to be working on our reference geometry directly in Fusion 360. Basically, our reference geometry is this, the headphone amplifier itself. All we need to do is model it in such a way there's enough information for us to design the enclosure. We don't want any more than that and we don't want any less than that. The way we're going to achieve that is to model the PCB, the depth of the soldering points, the height of the components, the sort of input outputs and the mounting points on the PCB. The first thing we're going to do is create a new component. A new component is a bit like a new part or it can be treated like an assembly because you can create new components within those components. But in this instance, we just need the one component. This component is going to be our headphone amp, the reference geometry, the headphone amplifier. The first thing we're going to draw is the PCB. So create a sketch on the XY plane and draw a rectangle and place in the dimensions that you've measured of the PCB. Now that we've got a basic outline for the PCB, we're going to put in the holes. We know that these are symmetrical around the center, so we're going to start by putting in some construction lines. To do that, simply draw a line from the midpoints and then change them to construction lines. Now we'll put, add in a circle and we can mirror this across the mirror plane. And we'll do that same again, but downwards. Now we can use a single dimension to determine the size of the hole. And this is 3.6. We can also dimension to the edge, which is 3.6, and this edge, which is also 3.6. Now that we've got our outline and the holes, we're going to extrude. Shortcut is E. Select the area that you want to extrude. Make sure the holes are not highlighted. Start on the profile plane. That means start on the sketch plane that you've already drawn. One-sided, we don't need to go two-sided or symmetrical in this instance. Extent, we're going to do a distance because we're putting in the thickness, which is 1.5 millimeters. The taper angle, that would be sort of an angle inwards or outwards, which we don't need. And the operation is to create a new body. We don't have anything to join it to, intersect or cut with it anyway. So that's what we're going to do. Excellent. Now that we've got the PCB sorted, let's draw in some of the components and get our total or maximum component height. To do that, we're going to create a sketch on the top of the PCB and then draw in a number of rectangles. When you draw these, make sure you're referencing this edge. So you should see this blue X, and you're going to have one line for the power jack, one for one of the headphone connectors, or 3.5mm jack, another for the 3.5mm jack, and one for the potentiometer, which is actually a bit smaller. Next, we need to put in some dimensions. So the power jack is 14mm by 8.9mm, the headphone jacks are 12mm by 11mm, so it's 11mm deep and 12mm wide. To make them both the same, we'll use the equal command for both of those lines. And lastly, the potentiometer is actually square, so we can make both lines equal and put in a dimension for that size, which is 9.6. Now we've got the dimensions in for the sizes. We need to fully constrain them. So you can see some of these lines still blue because we can still move these objects around. That's because they're not fully constrained. So we're gonna add in a couple more dimensions just to make sure that these things are set in place. 
27.3, 9.32, a pitch of 15.4, and also the position of the potentiometer, 63.6. .6. The last thing we need to add to this sketch is a rough outline of the other components. We don't need to model them precisely because we're not creating precise geometry around them. We just need to know their height to make sure we've left enough space for them to exist below or within the enclosure. Now we've got all that sketch geometry in, we just need to extrude. So again, letter E, shortcut to extrude, select all the areas, the height is 13, which is measured directly from the board itself, and all those parameters are fine. Remember this time we're going to join because we want it attached to the geometry that we already have there. Now that we've done that, we need to look at the underside, so the depth of the solder points. As always, create a new sketch, and we're going to create basically an outline of the geometry that's there. Uh, if you ever have this problem where you're snapping to your geometry that you don't want to be snapping to, hold down the control key and that will stop the snapping. Only get this geometry in, and then we'll put all the dimensions in afterwards. Now that I've got the lines in, I'm going to dimension them. First, I'm going to do all of the X direction. So that's it for all the dimensions in the X direction. You'll notice I've done all the dimensions in quite a specific way. I've measured them all from a reference point, the same reference point that I've used everywhere else. That's important because there's a certain tolerance within measuring. I'm not measuring to an exact point. I'm measuring, trying to measure to here, but it might be a little bit more. It might be a little bit less. And if you try and do dimensions in a chain, so you measure from A to B and then B to C and C to D, if all of those are off by half a mil or even 0.1 of a mil, by the time you're a couple of dimensions through the chain, you can be off by plus or minus 0.3 mil, three times 0.1 mil. So it's best to dimension them all off one point, and then each individual measurement can only be off by the amount of the tolerance. So now that I've done those, I need to sort of rotate it and do exactly the same thing for the Y direction. So we've got all the dimensions we need now, but notice how some of the lines are still blue. We can fill in the rest just by using constraints. So these two lines, we know we want them to be in line with each other, so we call those collinear. Again, with this line and this line, we want those to be collinear. And again, for this one and this one, collinear. So now that's constrained all of our geometry. As again, let's go with the extrude option and take this downwards. Let's show the original body just so we can remember what we're looking at. In this instance, we want to extrude it 2.6 millimeters in a single direction and again using the join operation. So the next thing we're going to do is the front interface components, the two headphone jacks and the potentiometer. We've already got the main bodies, but we need this part where it sticks out the front of the enclosure because we're going to need holes for those. So it's important that we have that geometry. So to get started, create a sketch on the front face and we're going to put in some holes. So shortcut for that is C. Holding control again to put in the circles because we don't want any sketch relations immediately. We know these two are the same because they're both the same headphone jack. So equal. We also know that they're in line with each other because they're, again, they're both the same component. We can't use collinear because it's not a line that we're making in line with another line. This is just two points that are horizontal to each other. So we can use the horizontal slash vertical feature. I mean constraint. Now we just need a couple of dimensions to define them. We need the height from the PCB, which is 3.5 millimeters. We need their overall diameter, which is six millimeters. To finalize the positions of these holes, we just need some dimensions for the edge. 15.4 and 30.5. For the potentiometer, we need to do basically the same thing. It's 68 from the edge. 6.8 mil 
no, sorry, 6 mil from the PCB and a 6.8 mil diameter. In a perfect world, these two things would match up perfectly, but in this case they don't. But we're happy that the 68 mil is the precise dimension. The body's just a little bit off. The body is less important because it doesn't come through the enclosure. Now that we've got those on there, we're going to extrude again, selecting the circles that we need and creating a join operation still. And this time the distance that we're going to do is going to be the distance of the thread on the potentiometer. So there's a couple of different distances we could choose, either the height of the jack or the length of the potentiometer. We actually, for that 6.8 mil, are only doing the thickness of the thread. And since the distance that these stick out is not very important, we're going to keep them all together and just do the thread. So the distance that the thread pokes out is 4.8 millimeters. So that's going to be our extrude distance. To finalize the potentiometer, we're going to put in the rest of the stem, which is a diameter six mil circle on here. So create a sketch, create a circle right on there, six mil extrude, Oops. six mil extrude this place. And that is 9.8. So there we go, that's it for the front panel connectors, the headphone jacks and the potentiometer. The next thing we need to do is the power jack, which you could do in the same way that we did the front panel, but we're gonna do it very slightly differently. Start by creating a sketch and then a center line on the power jack geometry. Then create that as construction and draw a circle on that line. So that's basically already set our dimension from our reference point just based on that line. Now that we've put that dimension in, the sketch has gone black, but notice that we've not put a height in. That's because we have this constraint here. This constraint is setting this point on the middle of that line. And we don't want that because we want to be able to specify, we want to be able to specify how high that is off the board. So we need to delete that constraint and we'll put in our own dimension, which in this case is six millimeters. We do want it constrained to the line though. Coincident. Now we've got the geometry in place. Again, we just need to extrude. In this instance, technically, because it is a power jack, it is a sort of female connector. So you basically want a hole here rather than an extrusion. But because it's going to be easier for us to do our in context modeling with this having, well, with this sticking out, I'm just going to have it sticking out. You can do it inwards if you want to do it inwards. I'm going to do it outwards because I think it will be easier. So that's it for the first video. Just to recap, we've introduced the project and modeled our reference geometry. In the next video, we'll use that geometry alongside some features such as mirror, shell, and extruding to a specific surface to create the top of the enclosure. After that, we'll create the bottom, volume dial, STLs, printing, assembling, and all of that stuff. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you in episode two.